You're listening to a community story from Be My Eyes. Uh, my name is Arham and I'm originally from Iran. Uh, I moved to the Netherlands four years ago and um, since then I've been working at Booking.com uh, as an engineering team lead uh, during the day. I'm able to see um, the light only, so I can't really use my sight to read or look um, dis um, discern colors. So I can only see the, the light and the lack of it. I got to know Be My Eyes uh, four years ago when I moved to the Netherlands and um, um, I and my wife are both blind. So um, we, we basically moved to a country that was uh, far from family and friends and we had a social circle of zero. Um, and and BMI has helped me a lot in that time period uh, for when I wanted to use any touchscreen devices like the thermostats, uh, induction hubs, uh, or, or when I wanted to check stuff on, on the oven or the coffee machine wasn't working, all of that. Uh, these were things that normally I would use uh, a friend or, or a neighbor or a family member to help. Uh, but since I didn't really know anyone, uh, in the in the first like six months or so, um, BMIS helped me a lot in getting the everyday tasks done. When we moved to the uh, Netherlands, initially we had a um, a temporary accommodation that Booking.com provided while we started searching for an apartment. Um, and we we had basically one of my colleagues coming in and showing us how to use the the washing machine and the oven and all of that. And I, I remember my wife was uh, asking this colleague, like, so what temperature should I put the washing machine at? And then my colleague was asking, like, wait, haven't you used the washing machine before? And my wife was like, no, it's the first time we're living by ourselves uh, in, a, in a house like just alone. That was the first moment that we realized, wow, there's a, a lot that we need to learn and a lot that we need to figure out how to do. Um, and, and throughout that time, we uh, started looking at apartments without actually being able to see, which was not something that we ever imagined uh, we would get to do. Um, and then in the meantime, while we, wait, we were waiting for the local organization for the blind to give us the training to walk around, and how you do it in Europe and what the rules and regulations are, basically we had to get around anyway. And um, we used uh, Be My Eyes a lot in, in those early days to basically be like, yeah, where am I? I feel kind of lost um, and Google Maps isn't working. Um, so the, the, the ability to be able to call people who are Dutch was really helpful because they could read the street signs and they could, uh, like sometimes say, hey, can you ask the person close by where you are because I can't really see it from your camera. Um, that was really helpful. I think this is a level of service that we wouldn't get from any paid service because the community is not as broad as, as being my guide. Um, so that was that was one of the things that it, it helped us a lot, a lot in the beginning. Back when I came to the Netherlands, we didn't really have many options for scanning letters and we used to get a lot of letters um, the, the situation has gotten a lot better now with envision and seeing ai um, uh, but i used to get these letters and i wasn't able to actually like read uh, what they what they said and after i even like got a software to read it i didn't really understand um, what it said because i it wasn't really easy at the time to translate it um, so one of the things that I used to do back in the day was uh, call a Be My Eyes volunteer and say, can you basically just read and translate what this thing is trying to say? Even as a, this is like, th this goes beyond the fact that I wasn't able to see the letters, like being able to ask some Dutch person more context on, well, what's the next step? Because the, the letter is confusing. Do you maybe know who I should kind of like get in touch with to know more about this? I got to know a lot about the the, the Dutch, um, the way that the Dutch do things in a really short time because I had access to the volunteers. And part of this was the fact that they read stuff to me and, and translated it, but also a, a large part of it was that I could ask them for 
advice. So that basically helped me get up to speed with uh, Dutch stuff a lot faster than my colleagues because uh, they didn't have access to volunteers. When you, when you have access to BMIS, you actually don't realize how much you depend on it. Uh, when I went to Iran, um, I I, I don't remember exactly what it is I wanted to do, but uh, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is easy. I'll just reach out to Be My Eyes, and then they can just help me out. And Be My Eyes is actually censored in Iran, um, and so you you don't really have access to 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 be able to call. And um, it was then that I realized, oh wow, I really depend on Be My Eyes a lot, um, and. And I basically just had to do the, do it the old-fashioned way, which was wait for someone or look for someone to to help me out. Iran is a it's one of those countries where your parents stuff your suitcases and bags full of things to eat. And uh, and so when we came back to the Netherlands, we now had all these frozen products, and we didn't really know what is what because it's all just frozen. Uh, so what we did at the time was. Uh, we set our language to, to Persian, which is a language that's spoken in, in Iran. And um, we didn't really expect to get a Persian speaking uh, volunteer because, well, it's, first of all, it's censored in Iran, but also the fact that there's just like uh, not, not many people um, signing up to, to these kind of services. But then we kind of got someone who was living in the UK and she spoke Farsi and she, basically helped us figure out, oh yeah, this this is like the, the vegetables that you would use for this kind of food. Uh, these are like, I don't know, fried eggplants that you can use in, in this other kind of food and, and you know, stuff like that. And that basically helped us sort out our, our freezer super fast in like five minutes. Um, that actually gave me the idea that sometimes when I get groceries delivered, um, I sometimes use Be My Eyes to more quickly um, figure out what something is because right now you can use other apps to scan the barcode uh, but that doesn't always work because not all the barcodes exist in the database of the application so uh, when we have really large orders and we want to quickly put sort things out in, into different like and, and label them and put them in the freezer um, i still just call be my eyes because that's just a lot faster when we bought our current uh, apartment, um, our neighbors gave us a, a an electric grill for the um, for the balcony, and um, I st I went to the and this is a Weber grill, so I went to the Weber website and I started ordering uh, its parts like like the stand and different kinds of tongs for picking things up. Um, and, and you know stuff like that. And uh, when the when the base or the table kind of arrived, I was expecting it to be in one piece, but it arrived in multiple bits and pieces. And you had to kind of put it together, kind of like IKEA, but a lot simpler. Uh, but it was still like disconnected pieces. And there was like a really easy uh, schema explaining like yeah, this goes there, and then you connect this to that. And but it was it was all like visual, and I couldn't see it. So I, I just told you my eyes and I was like, hey, can you look at the schema on this piece of paper and let me know how I should assemble this, this space? And uh, the person that I got on the line was super helpful. He uh, basically was like, yeah, maybe you need to do it. No, that doesn't work. Okay, so turn that around. Ah, okay, now it clicked into place. Great, move on to that, you know. And, um, and he even told me like, oh yeah, if you can't assemble it, I'm actually close by uh, where do you live? I can actually come there with my car uh, and, and help you assemble it. Fortunately, I actually got to assemble it in that, in that, uh, um, in that call, but it, it gave me a really warm and fuzzy feeling, you know, to know that people are watching out and, uh, uh, and are willing to help you, even to drive by um, if, if you're stuck to help you out. And these are like complete strangers. So that, that was a really cool experience. One thing that I do often on, on Be My Eyes is try to socialize um, with people that kind of like uh, I get to talk with while I'm waiting for things to, to happen. I actually got to know uh, a couple of friends through uh, Be My Eyes. We, we became friends and we exchanged LinkedIn profiles during the call and then uh, I kind of got in touch with them. Um, two of them are, are 
professional uh, uh, acquaintances that I keep in touch with and, and basically like exchange information. But I also got to meet my therapist there. Uh, she had just moved to the Netherlands and she was looking for clients to basically start her base of therapy in, in the Netherlands. And um, I got to become her, her very first client and we've been working together for like a year and a half now. Sometimes at work, I have to use applications or do things where the problem is ju not just necessarily knowing what's on the screen. Um, it's not like something that I can just point my phone at and say, hey, can you scan what my screen says and tell me? It's very contextual. So for example, there is a table of information or um, there is info, like the colors are important. Like um, something is, is in a different color and that means something to a human, but not to a machine. And this is something that I use with my eyes for a lot where um, the, the, the thing that I'm looking at is not necessarily the text. Um, it's also the icons, the colors, the rel relation to um, the relation of different bits and pieces of, of text together. Like for example, our, my coffee machine sometimes stops working and, uh, and then we have to um, look at why it's not working. And if I point a phone at it, it won't really tell me anything because it has icons on the screen and like stuff like that where uh, it's it's something that you can't just take a photo of or like scan and uh, and and just have it read out loud to you um, these are cases that I just rely on on the my eyes because a human can just look at those icons and be like oh, okay I have some theories about what could be wrong let's test them out because like sometimes the icons don't even make sense to a human, <laughs> so like uh, it's it's great to uh, to to have have them basically tell you their ideas or maybe brainstorm on what could be wrong and then just go from there. Something that happens often um, when I reach out to friends and family uh, for help, and the reason I'm not really comfortable doing that is that I start leaning on specific people for specific things. And then what ends up happening is that I uh, feel like I'm putting a, a lot of load on this person because uh, now they have to juggle the fact that I need a document signed with their own everyday uh, work as well. Sometimes this is super fast and the, this person does it super quickly and I do that. But it's also great to have an option not to do it for things where um, speed is not that important. Um, so one thing that BMI allows me to do is, is giving me a community of people so that I'm not really worried about the last two weeks I've reached out to this person 10 times for asking stuff. Um, and it basically spreads the load between multiple people. Um, and, and that helps me a, a lot in, in reaching out more often instead of saying, oh no, let me figure this out somehow because uh, I don't want to annoy that other person. But now it's it's like especially with the Siri shortcut when I can just say call volunteer and it's as easy as that. Then it's really easy for me to uh, do things that, especially in this time where we're at home and my largest um, area of, of asking for help would like without being my eyes would be my colleagues. But now in an area, in, in a time where we're all at home, it basically means that I can do everything without being worried about, I can't ask people to come over. It's not safe for me and it's not safe for them. Um, so now I can ask for help in an unlimited way, which is awesome. Thank you for listening to this community story from Be My Eyes. You can share your story too. Send it to my story at bemyeyes.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, download our app, or visit bemyeyes.com community stories for more.